Welcome back to the weekend with Anthony Opperman. Over the last several years, the NFL has made a point to try and prevent hits that can result in concussions, as well as tighten rules about clearing players who have sustained concussion-like symptoms. Well, this past week, the Cleveland Browns have come under some fire for not uh, detecting and diagnosing Colt McCoy's apparent concussion. And you know, speaking of that, James Harrison from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who delivered the hit on Colt McCoy that resulted in that concussion, has been suspended a game by the NFL for delivering that hit. You know, it's not just football where concussion symptoms have really come into play and have affected perhaps the long-term outlook of certain players in the NHL as well. Certainly the biggest name in the National Hockey League, Sidney Crosby, out indefinitely again with concussion-like symptoms. And in light of this and in light of this being a current topic, I wanted to talk with somebody who can speak from experience about concussions. And with that, we welcome to the weekend Mark Kelso, who spent eight seasons in the NFL with the Buffalo Bills. Mark, thank you in advance for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Now, tell me, when did you experience your first concussion symptoms, and what was that whole experience like? Well, you know, it probably goes back, <clears throat> probably goes back into to, to youth football or something. I certainly can remember just having a, a, a really bad headache one time when I was a, a real young player. But I think probably the first instance I had where, where I, I mean, again, they, they've expanded the, the definition of a concussion with the, with the symptoms. And anything that, that is characteristic of a symptom of a concussion, they kind of diagnose as, a, as some, some grade of concussion. But I, I think the first one I had was at William Mary, actually. And, and you know, unfortunately, it, it still exists today where, I mean, as a defensive player, I mean, it's kind of a badge of courage to, to make somebody see stars or to see stars yourself because you know it was a big hit. But we were playing a game at Virginia Tech, and I came out of the game because every time, uh, I can't remember what the running back's name was, but he was pretty good. I think Tony Page was there at the time and somebody else. And, and, um, and every time he came out, I saw three of them. And uh, so I came out of the game, and I can remember my defensive back coach, William Mary, saying, what are you doing out of the game? And I said, well, of course, every time the running back comes out, I see three of them. He said, well, tackle the one in the middle and get back in the game. <laughs> and uh, and that was kind of, I mean, that was the mentality. I think, um, you know, things have certainly changed over the years. Uh, I mean, I don't think anybody who's ever uh, played the game has not left a practice or a game with, you know, with a headache at, at one time or another. And, and uh and you know, they just didn't really understand what what the long term ramifications might be. I think they have a better better idea of that now. And, and I think they they've done some good things. I mean, there's a lot of the good measures that have been instituted. I think to try to protect the safety of players. And in my mind, anything that helps protect the safety of players is a good thing. You're joined by Mark Kelso, former safety of the Buffalo Bills. And Mark, you know, you were kind of at the forefront of concussion prevention in the late '80s, early '90s. As as you mentioned, you know we've learned a lot about it now, and there's been a lot of emphasis put on it now. But back then, it was as you said, kind of like a badge of courage. You just you toughed it out, you stayed in there. That was football. But you know, when you were playing, you wore a an additional padding over the top of your helmet. I guess referred to as a pro cap. Just talk about how that came about because it was unusual. I know every time the Bills were playing on TV, it seemed like every single time you got singled out for your unusual looking helmet. Yeah, and it was and not so much unusual as it was big. I mean it added what the what the pro cap is is a softer like an energy management uh technology. Uh it's a um you know, it's a material that, that that absorbed energy, and it was a softer, softer type material. I mean, it had a millimeter of of material on the outside that that's slippery, so that you don't have. I mean, there's no sticking when you hit somebody else or something where you might injure your neck. So, so it wasn't soft in that regard, but uh, but it has a memory, so that when when you had a blow to the head or you were delivering a hit on somebody else, that as, as that material compresses, it slows down the force. Uh, that, that in the time that the force gets to your head and then and therein helps helps prevent concussions. I mean, I wore it. I was the beneficiary of some foresight of an engineer in in Erie, Pennsylvania, who now lives in the Baltimore area, um, Bert Strauss, and he was uh, he invented the product. He had a relationship with our head trainer Eddie Abramowski at the time, and uh, they they had grown up in Erie together, and and uh, so they and, and Eddie was always I thought our medical staff at the Bills, Eddie and the the, the medical professionals and the athletic trainers were always. Um, interested in making sure our guys 
would uh, would enjoy the best possible health benefits that that, that their knowledge uh, would allow and and uh, wanted us to leave the game healthy and, and be a vibrant part of our community when we left. And so it really came down to an ultimatum to me. I had suffered a number of concussions and tried some other things and, and neck braces and all kinds of different things just to try to try to take up the whiplash effect that sometimes causes them. And then, and they they found this product and and, uh, and and they basically said if you don't wear it we're not going to permit you to play anymore and oh, wow. and I wanted to continue playing but I had a young family at the same time and and wanted to do everything I could to to protect my head for long term health and and I played five years with with that product and and I had one one incident subsequent to that uh, in those five years but uh, did not have any problems after that and I think I really think that's kind of where the technology is headed eventually and um, some of the helmet companies have made some pretty good strides, but I think that that soft router pad, of which I'm a part of with this same company, that you know, working to produce additional pads and and things that are more streamlined to the helmet, and and ultimately a full helmet that utilizes that technology. You're joined by Mark Kelso, former safety with the Buffalo Bills, spent eight years in the NFL, and and Mark, I wanted to ask you about that. How involved are you with? you know, helping to develop some of the research since you kind of were a, I don't want to say test dummy because that's not the right phrase, but that, that since you utilized some of the early technology with this and, and how much of an advocate are you uh, for you know, working with youth coaches especially to help prevent kids from sustaining uh, some of these concussion-like symptoms in their teens? Yeah, well, well, no question. I was the guinea pig. I mean, you can say it. I mean, I was because they really, although the, the product had been tested extensively in the lab and in independent labs, too, by the way. I mean, sometimes you have products that are tested in the laboratory of the manufacturers, and and uh, you know those results can be skewed to to favor whatever whatever company is producing the results. But I, the helmet, the the pro cap that I wore was tested at Penn State uh, in biomechanics lab, Wayne State University, Waterloo, Ontario. I mean, there are all kinds. Of places where it was tested to make sure that it exhibited principles that weren't going to result in other injuries like that when I talked about that glanceability issue because whenever something compresses it has the capacity to stick a little bit which you wanted to make sure that didn't happen so that you didn't prevent uh, a head injury and cause a neck injury um, and and uh, so I was confident that with all those test results uh, and, and all those PhD guys that were looking at those things saying uh, you know this is a safe product and and uh, and I'm a huge advocate. There's no question. I mean, I've, I've been involved since since that first day I wore it in 1989 to try to streamline the product, to try to help in in and uh, with with product development, and uh, not from a chemical perspective, but more from from an aesthetic and a, and a product inception, trying to make sure we can penetrate the market at the youth level and and then kind of move your way up, much like hockey helmets have done with with a face mask, but I do think the outer, that, that softer outer shell technology is, is where things need to go. And then you put, you put one on, on, on both guys, that, you know, the, the hitter and the hitty, and, and then, you know, the, the results, the, the protection becomes, becomes exponential because you have two softer pads contacting each other. And, and again, I don't, I mean, the helmet companies have moved, the progress has not been real robust or swift, but but there has been a lot of progress. I mean, the helmets that they have today are uh, are, are more protective than, than the helmets they had when when uh, I played the game. And and there's, they've done an awful lot of testing to try to measure the results of um, of concussions and concussion like symptoms, and and uh, and trying to do all that they can now to understand it and understand all the forces that go into causing. Um, something like that, or some type of head injury, and and seeing ways that they can they can possibly alleviate it. But the game has gotten faster, and guys have gotten bigger, and collisions have gotten more violent. So, uh, you know, it's not surprising to me that uh, that they've still considered to continue to have a problem. Well, you bring that up, Mark, and, and you're a former safety, and you played on the defensive side of the ball. Do you think the NFL is doing the right thing, cracking down on the hits deemed to be helmet to helmet, and and especially like in the case of a guy like James Harrison and, and his most recent uh, collision with Colt McCoy? Yeah, you know I don't know James Harrison. Obviously, a terrific player and and a Pro Bowl caliber type guy. And um, I, I I thought the hit hit the hit on McCoy. I mean, I'd have to see it again and 
I didn't see it in game speed. I just saw a couple of replays. It seemed sure. to me that it warranted some type of punishment. I mean, he, the quarterback obviously delivered the football, and he continued after he delivered the football. And he, but he could have just reached out and you know kind of punched him with the with the palms of his hands and knocked him down and by hitting him in the chest. Instead, he, you know, he really delivered a helmet to helmet blow and 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 caused some problems. And you don't need a medical professional to diagnose a concussion like that. I mean, Paul McCoy's laying on the ground. I could have told you in a second that that he had he had a problem. Problem. And uh, so I don't know, you know, I don't know what the problem is there. But you were, I guess, when we were talking earlier, you, you did sure. mention that the Browns have come under some fire for the way that they handled that situation. And in fact, I know that that uh, that um, Commissioner Goodell and some of the the uh, medical staff at the, at the NFL level, at the, at the corporate level, are meeting with uh, with the personnel in Cleveland to make sure that that the procedures are followed the way they're intended to be followed. But uh, I, you know, guys talk about they can't change the way they hit. It's a violent game, and I, I don't, I don't agree with that. And, and if you want the perfect example, then just look at the way that I tackled and, and guys in my era tackled. When you use your shoulder, you drop your shoulder, you wrap your arms. No one tackles like that anymore. They just want to, they want to come in, they want to make a big hit, they dive at your knees, or they, or they sometimes dive lower than that, and they either roll tackle or do, do, you know, some other type of thing, but they don't use the, they don't use their arms to tackle much anymore because they want to deliver a big hit and they want to try to protect themselves at the same time. So, I mean, I think it can, I think people can change, they can certainly modify some of the tackling techniques they use and try to keep their head out of it. And, and again, that's not anything that protects the safety of the player, both the, both the hitter and the hitty, in my opinion, is a good thing. Getting joined by Mark Kelso, former safety with the Buffalo Bills for eight seasons and also former standout in women, Mary and Mark, we've devoted a lot of time to talking about concussions and certainly appreciate your insights on that. But also wanted to talk about your time on campus in Williamsburg and, and as a member of the tribe, uh, how closely do you still follow the program and, and what were some, some of your fonder moments from your time in Williamsburg? Well, not, uh, I tell you, I, I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't been able to follow the program as closely as, as I would have liked. I mean, still have a great affection for, for the program and for Coach Laycock, who was in his second year when I started at William & Mary in 1980, 81, the fall of 81. And, um, but but just I mean I have great memories and and in some of the great memories go back to the the Richmond rivalry. Dale Shealy uh, was a good friend. I haven't talked to him for a while, but he was a good friend as well. The former head coach of the, of the Spiders, and uh, and and he would come down occasionally to speak on campus at William Mary to some programs that that I was involved in. And and uh, but I certainly remember some of those rivalry games. My my freshman uh, my freshman year one of the one of the games that uh, that I ended up having a chance to start my freshman year because we had some injuries and and uh, ended up having a pretty good year and and certainly remember the Richmond game finally and and I uh, think actually I think that that the uh, the tribe had the better of the, of the Spiders that day but that wasn't always the case and I remember a great uh, a great game in I think it was my senior year actually in in Richmond we're playing against the Spiders and I was returning punts at the time. And uh, and and it was, it was the second or third punt of the game, and I thought, you know what, it, 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 the punt came out low. It was about 40 yards, and I said, this is going to be a really good returnable punt because it doesn't have any hang time. I'm going to catch this. And I'm going to go. There's going to be a lot of room to run it. And I caught the ball. I took one step, and somebody just lit me up. And I broke my nose, and it was. And I was. I didn't. I, you know, I don't think I had a concussion, but uh, it was. It was an ugly hit on my end, and a great hit from the Spiders, and then we come off the field, and the guy who was supposed to be blocking me was standing on the field because we only had 10 guys on the field. And um, <laughs> But there were a lot of, again, there were a lot of fun memories. Uh, and, and, you know, I ended up in, in the NFL with a couple guys, you know, Rich, some Spiders went through there as well, okay, through Buffalo at one mm-hmm. time or another, and, and I had some good memories from there as well. So uh, it was a great place. I mean, William Mary is a great place, and, and Richmond is very much like it. A great place to play college football and terrific academics, a, you know, vibrant campus life, and and just a great opportunity to play, you know, to play at the, at the highest level of competition. So it was uh, it was a really great experience. What are you up to now, Mark? Uh, I am uh, well right now. I'm the advancement executive director of a, of a small Catholic high school, co-ed Catholic high school, in the Buffalo area, and uh, we have 380 students. And I've uh, been doing that for about seven years. I uh, was in elementary education prior to that, teaching 10-year-olds. And uh, and they treat you like an ex-NFL guy for about 10 minutes, and then you're just their <laughs> teacher. 
so uh, it, uh, it that was a lot of fun. Elementary education had been a lot of fun, and then I've been at the at the uh, high school level now for a number of years, and I and I have an opportunity to do the broadcast for the Bills too for the last six years. So there's a lot going on this time of year. It gets, gets pretty busy uh, with uh, with the NFL season and the high school season. And I coach for a lot of years too at the high school level, but uh, um, but I'm not doing that now. Partly in part because of some con- some concussion programs that um that I participate in through Morehouse Medical School that sends us around the different NFL cities. Again, Mark Kelso, former safety with the Buffalo Bills, join us here on the weekend. Stay tuned; we've got more coming up. You're listening to Sports Radio 910.